The coronavirus pandemic has ground sports to a standstill, but could baseball soon be back? The Associated Press reporting Major League Baseball and the Players Union are discussing potentially putting all 30 teams in the Phoenix area this season and playing to empty ballparks. This as the NFL is reportedly hashing out details for a virtual draft it would hold later this month after the league scrapped plans for a draft in Las Vegas due to the pandemic. In the meantime, UFC president Dana White may have the most out-of-the-box idea yet. Listen to this. I'm going to continue to pump fights out. I've also secured an island. I've got an island. The infrastructure is being built right now. We're going to do all of our international fights on this island. So when April 18th, when we do this fight on April 18th, international and local, you know, uh, in the United States, we're going to start cranking. Brian, my goal in life is to say out loud, I have an island. That's all I want. Right. What do you think about this <laughs> right, idea? I'm, right. I'm going to try to get you a price on Long Island because it's for sale right now and a little overrun, but you, get the, you have to take Alec Baldwin, too, because uh, he's out in Southampton. Uh, but a couple of things. Uh, Dana Baldwin's tight with the president. He has uh, talked to him. He understands what's going on. Uh, he did not want to stop the first time. This makes total sense but he'll be, for him to be the first. And believe me, the administration's on board. If they had a problem, he wouldn't be doing it. It makes total sense. That reporter was way too close. Baseball's the most intriguing because baseball, <laughs> those players don't get paid. But basketball's going to get paid. Hockey's going to get paid. But if you don't start the baseball season, they're not going to get paid. And they live a $15 million lifestyle. Uh, it's hard to make up for that when you lose an entire season. So they'll go to Arizona and play in front of empty stadiums, you know, two games, uh, you know, five days, uh, seven days a week if they have to. Yeah, Dr. Sapphire, let me ask you, I mean, does that qualify as safe? Would they have to take an antibody test or something before they got out there? Because maybe the stadium is empty, but they're certainly not social distancing from each other when you're trying to tag someone out at base. Sure. I mean, I don't really know how it's going to work. You know, Katie and I both being from Arizona, the, they have the Salt River Fields, which has, which has 12 practice stadiums and then one main stadium. And they're talking about potentially just quarantining everybody who actually is playing baseball and keeping them all confined within their own hotels and then their own, you know, baseball diamonds. So is my question, like, it's just going to be a free-for-all and they're going to deal with herd immunity. They're just going to allow people to infect each other. I don't really know. I think if, they, if they're going to do this smartly, you're absolutely right. Having the antibody test to see who can possibly has already been exposed and may be immune to it. But then that means that you're probably going to have a very limited amount of players who are actually playing. I don't really know how that's going to play out. You know, Arizona is beautiful this time of year. They definitely have the space to socially distance. Yeah. Maybe the umpires aren't there. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like a flag football version where you can't touch each other. I don't really know. <laughs> Katie, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are go Nationals, World Series champs. That is well, not helpful. You know, somebody has to go back out onto the field and start this. So we'll see if baseball can be the one to figure it out and to do it. But certainly I know that America's my son game. has watched the same football games over and over and over again. I could tell you every play that's coming up. We've watched the same ones. We need some new sports. So anyway, thanks, guys. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to Brian Kilmeade and everyone on our virtual couch.